Hello, and welcome to the Humumu Halloween Home Horror Hoedown. The podcast where we watch 31 horror movies throughout the hallowed month of October. Ranging from the critically acclaimed to film school projects gone gruesomely awry. And we take them all way too seriously. I'm your host, Mike Hummel. And I'm your host, Sully Hummel. Now warning, we use a ghoulish number of spoilers, so watch the movies first. Second warning, we don't know anything about anything, so don't take us seriously while we take these movies seriously. So today we just dove into the list of movies on Amazon and looked for something specifically according to Soli. I had asked for something that was like teenagers uh, in a cabin in the woods. And what we found is called 30 Miles from Nowhere. Which is former teenagers who haven't really matured a whole lot since then. Yeah. In a cabin in the Wisconsin woods. Which is an exciting connection for Soli. I did go to school. I did go to college in Wisconsin. Which is great because this is about people who are together in college and now they're kind of having a reunion all because of the funeral of one of them. So they're coming to the funeral getting to stay in the cabin where I guess they hung out in their college days also because they talked about it. They seemed times about very it. familiar with it. Yeah. But it wasn't very clear if they all went to college in Wisconsin or they just, this Max who whose death was bringing them all together, if he just happened to live in Wisconsin and they had come to visit him a lot here, I was very unclear on that stage of it. That's good because I was very unclear on all of the stages of this movie. <laughs> It was it was definitely one of the movies that threw a lot of questions at you without giving you a whole lot of answers until the end where it throws a whole bunch of sort of answers yeah. and you're supposed to think, oh, that's what it all meant. I didn't feel like that explained much or made any sense. Yeah. That was one thing throughout the movie. There were so many things that happened that just felt like that's not how that would happen. <laughs> Particularly the way people were, were reacting to things. Yes. Um, there was a dog in the movie. Many times we'd see this dog and people were just terrified of this happy, friendly dog. It was barking at them, but it was fine. Yeah, not even in a really aggressive way. Yeah. Although I was not sure. There was the point where two of the guys came across Sylvia, who was Max's wife, who, you know, she lived there on the property. They came across Sylvia with, with like a pile of dog bodies. And she's like, yeah. I don't know what to do with all of these. And then they didn't react strongly. They were just like, okay, well, we're yeah. going to go back to the cabin <laughs> now. They definitely thought it was weird. But yeah, not a big reaction. But but huge reaction to the barking dog yeah. on the other side of the yard. <laughs> I know. Well, and even before that, like Amber sees the dog in the distance, like in the shadows, and she's like, guys, guys, what's that over there? <laughs> it was so scary. And then it comes running towards them and the entire group scatters, screaming right. in terror. Instead of going, shut up, Amber, it's a dog. <laughs> I don't um, know. And that's the least of it. Like, it wasn't it wasn't about the dog. That was just one no. thing. But the whole the way everyone reacted to things. Very strange. Some of the places where I was thrown off by reactions were, I think, them trying to pretend that the movie magic was something other than what it was. Like, when yeah. the one woman was in the shower and <laughs> the water turned into blood and then turned back to water. And she, like, never knew that it had happened because yeah. she had her eyes closed and she was spraying herself. And, you know, it turned to blood. So she sprays blood all over herself and it turns back to water and she rinses the blood off. And, and like, we noticed. see it. Right. But she doesn't notice. And I'm like, it is obvious from looking at it that that blood had a different feel to yeah, it. Yeah, it was thick. And... I would have immediately recognized, oh, something is wrong. And I would have opened my eyes and then I would have been able to like react to it. And she had no reaction. She just blithely was spraying herself with blood and then rinsing herself off. Luckily. Yeah. And then these two women were in a bed and they like woke up to find they were covered with cockroaches. And both of them were like, oh, my neck's being tickled. That's not how it feels when a cockroach walks on you. <laughs> not just a cockroach. They were covered yes. with cockroaches. And they were just like, 
oh, that feels good. And they didn't, like, react until they opened their eyes and saw the cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was very strange. I had issues with other movie magic moments, too, like... The power goes out, so they go down to the basement to look for the kerosene lamps. And upstairs, the power goes out, and it's immediately very dark, and you can't really see what's going on. They go into the basement, and there's full daylight streaming through a window so that they can find their way through the basement. It was very bright in the basement. I mean, it was, I think, the brightest scene in the whole movie was them (laughs) in the basement at night during a blackout. Yes. And, and they had no and the thing is it wasn't like it was just for our benefit. They had no problem seeing where they were going and yeah. finding what they were looking for. Yeah. Clearly it really was supposed to be that bright for no reason. Well, I don't think it was supposed to be. I think they just didn't address the fact that it <laughs> wasn't like it should have been darker. That like they should have been struggling to find the light. I don't know. It felt like they just shot this scene during daylight hours. <laughs> And forgot that it was supposed to take place at night. I don't know. Very weird. There there were a couple of times where I noticed it would flip scene, you know, it would flip between perspectives in a, a particular scene. And it was like much darker in one place than it was in another place. Yeah. Like, ugh. Continuity issues are the worst. Well, and then the sink is clogged, apparently. I mean, they, they really didn't emphasize this clearly but apparently the sink was clogged stuff wasn't going down even though i saw no one trying to run water so i don't know well they they did run the water the one time and then it turned into blood well right but that was earlier yeah but then she's like hey the sink's clogged go check the well like (laughs) the well doesn't go on that end of where water happens the well is at the start of the water situation (laughs) Yeah, it was it was very much like they did not realize that there's a difference between the well and the septic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. So this movie falls into our experiment category. It was an experiment. Um, not because it was Secretly. an experiment, but because the movie is about an experiment. And we don't know that until much later. We are confused like the friends who have come for this funeral that wasn't real it wasn't max was alive everybody spoilers which is fun except then i still don't really understand it so yeah i don't like max is a scientist and he's doing some research for the department of defense and his wife is a documentarian yes who wants to do the same research and just wants to document it well i don't know that she wanted to though i think she was very bitter about how the stuff she wanted to do wasn't like couldn't be sold like nobody wanted to buy it so she's stuck documenting max Max's experiment, which we don't learn until very, very close to the end, is about fear and how fear impacts people's behavior. Yes. I mean, she she kind of explains this idea that in war, people don't want to shoot other people because you innately don't want to hurt other human beings. But if you can scare them, you can make them get over that and shoot other people. So it's something that the Department of Defense would like to turn people into killing machines. Yes. And so I guess this is just spitball in here. This movie was her trying to scare all these people, then get them to kill somebody. They never, she never tried to make them kill somebody, except here's the thing. I think the twist, and maybe we're just dumb, or at least I am, the twist is that Max was behind it all along. She was only pretending to kill Max with the shovel. And the whole point was they were supposed to get so scared of how crazy out of control she was at that point that they would kill her. But of course, then she'd be dead. So that's not great for her. Well, and then Paul came in at the very end, like she was going to kill them all. I think she had cracked. Like She was not quite on board. She was not, yeah, she was not all there. So at one point, we're supposed to think that she killed Max. And then we're supposed to think that, oh no, Max is alive. And then she kills Max right in front of them, like with a shovel or whatever, because he is going against her wishes in conducting this experiment on his friends. But then at the end, she's the one who ends up shot, and Max is all like, look at me, I'm still alive. I'm like, this guy won't die. He's like a cat. He's unkillable. And She was right to think the zombie apocalypse was nigh, Amber was. (laughs) Yes, she was. So, yeah, I don't understand. I had this vague feeling at the end 
that Max was definitely behind it all and that he was really doing it to get even with Paul. Right. Because when they were back in college, Paul had ruined an experiment of his, had like ratted him out for unethical behavior in an experiment or something. Uh, Surprise, surprise. And so because Paul was the one who shot Sylvia in the end, like he's getting arrested. Yeah. Even though there's lots of video footage of what actually happened, which the people all had control over. So what's the problem? But anyway, apparently that's part of it is the cops were like, hey, you signed this waiver. Mm -hmm. So you agreed to be part of this, which A, you can't. (laughs) <laughs> make people you can't there's nothing you can sign that makes it okay for you to be arrest not be arrested for murder or be arrest I don't know it doesn't make sense hey <laughs> if you don't want to be tortured into insanity maybe you should have volunteered for some and random the, unknown thing the volunteering was It was like the guest book for the funeral, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it was completely fake. They had just signed on a page where it was just lines with their name, and the cops were willing to believe that this was the waiver they were signing. It would not have stood up in court. (laughs) No. Although one of the... the friends was like said to the cop you have to understand and the cop was like i'm not paid to understand and (laughs) i'm like isn't that your entire job is to try to understand what happened no cops just take them in let someone else understand i'm not paid to understand i'm like oh wisconsin (laughs) (laughs) well part of the wisconsin fun was sylvia She was being super Midwestern the whole time, and that was funny. It was kind of like the movie Fargo, but not quite that far. Yeah. It's a little upsetting how how similar Wisconsin and... Serial killer. (laughs) Yeah, were there. Like, I'm not sure which parts were her just having lost her mind and which parts were her living in Wisconsin. (laughs) Sorry, everybody who lives in Wisconsin. So it wouldn't surprise me if they went to college in Wisconsin. It wouldn't even surprise me if I found out that they went to college in Menominee, Wisconsin. That's where I went. And I went for completely innocent reasons. They had a great uh, early childhood program. I really liked that school. After I signed up to go to Menominee, I learned that they have the most bars per capita of any city in Wisconsin. Which definitely fits in with another whole issue of this movie that these people were, I mean, these are grown adults who were the most college-y, mm-hmm. just promiscuous, <laughs> drunk people I've ever seen in a movie. Like... It, it was, what was going on? It was all the same behavior you see in a horror movie with teenagers in a yeah, cabin. with like 16-year-olds. Where they're like drinking way too much and making all kinds of crude jokes and everyone's mm-hmm. having sex with everyone else behind everyone else's back. Like, listing all the different years in which they previously had sex. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like it was so much drama and chaos, but on like 35-year-olds. Yeah. And I'm like, it just doesn't look good on you guys anymore. <laughs> I don't know. This was very strangely written to me. Like, the way everything played out just didn't make sense. You know what it feels like? What's that? It feels like a movie written by college students (laughs) about what they think life will be like in, like, 10 years, 15 years. That could be. Like, this, this this was college students guessing what they would be 15 years from now. Yeah. And, like, not realizing that they would grow up and their bodies would start to tell them, like, hey, no, don't drink so much tequila, don't drink so much whiskey, whatever. Like, they have no idea what adulthood is going to do to them. And that's why there were, like, ten references to how great it was that this one girl was 23. Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, 23-year-olds are so amazing. (laughs) They're like, yeah, we are. (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's very strange. Huh. It definitely had like that college, like film school vibe to it. Like it's yes. trying to have a message, but it's what? convoluted and confused. <laughs> what you're saying makes so much sense because because of the way it doesn't quite make sense. And like at the end, the way they really don't understand how contracts work or being <laughs> arrested or 
scientific septic studies systems. or septic. <laughs> yes, they didn't know what a well does. That makes see, so much sense that it's somebody really young that wrote it. I see any real 35-year-old would not have a problem with the garbage disposal in the sink being stuck because that happens all the time yeah and by the time you're 35 you've like solved that problem like six <laughs> times in your life yeah you've cleaned all you yanked all the blood and body parts out of it yeah i yeah <laughs> it amused me actually that sylvia was like the water's a little sedimenty it's okay <laughs> like a little sedimenty it's literally looks like corn syrup coming out of the faucet well i think that was part of the terror <laughs> Which, okay, so horror movie category, I mean, were you feeling that? Was there horror here? It's interesting because it, as I was watching it and not knowing what was going on, I it felt had no idea. very supernatural. Like they had right. the dead guy showing up outside the window. They had blood coming out of the sink, crazy noises under the house. Like it definitely had a supernatural vibe to it, which was sort of scary. I mean, it was scary. I I tend to not yeah. be scared by that. Well, sure. So, but yeah, it had that energy to it. And then we get to the end and I'm like, oh, it's not supernatural at all. All of that stuff had a real life explanation where Sylvia and Max or just Sylvia or just Max or I don't know, was setting it all up to torture them. And then it, then it becomes a psychological thriller. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess that was sort of scary, too. It wasn't... Yeah. It wanted to be scary, but it really wasn't. Yeah, I think... It was not, more not funny. Super. There was definitely a comedy element to it, but the people were so kind of nasty. Like, okay, Paul is repeatedly referred to probably five separate times yes. as a saint in this movie because he's a decent human being. <laughs> and they hate him for They're it. They're so mad at him. There's a whole scene... Where Larry violently berates him, not for anything he's done wrong, but literally for offering to go get wood for people. <laughs> he's like, how dare you try to make yourself better than us by helping people? See, again, that, that kind of feels like it fits with the, the people who made this movie were very young. Because they're like threatened by... This yes. competent, generous, kind person who, yeah. you know, who's doing so much better than they are, and they're very threatened by it. And I'm not at all saying that all young people are like that, but, like, these people <laughs> in college would have been threatened by someone who yes. knew what the, he was doing and had any kind of confidence. Like, like they were the kind of people who were doing a lot of drugs and alcohol and having a lot of sex to cover up for the fact that they were lacking in self-esteem right yeah makes sense and he wasn't doing that so he was the enemy <laughs> and even back in college like he was the one who tattled i guess is the way they looked at it like he tattled he ratted out max mm -hmm. for doing something inappropriate i think it was some kind of plagiarism or faking his data or something like he did the right thing but it cost a, their friend something so then he became yeah. the enemy i mean at least in that case it's something that hurts somebody but but even then it feels like a very immature yes um philosophy to have that like it's that idea of loyalty over anything and yeah. loyalty is really a very like we've talked about mm -hmm. this before it's a terrible concept i don't like, like it it actually means giving up your morals and ethics to protect someone. And I'm like, that's not okay. No, that's not good. This all is starting to come together, though, under the idea that mm -hmm. the writers are college kids. Like, mm -hmm. that kind of just fits. And the thing is, like what you were saying about the supernatural stuff versus a psychological thriller... For two-thirds of the movie, you didn't really know what was going on. Mm -mm. Not in a bad way, although there was that too, but in a good way where mm -hmm. you're like, I'm not sure what the problem is, but I'm keeping an eye out for all mm -hmm. these different clues. And I think that they did really well, and that was fun to like try to guess what was what it was all meaning mm -hmm. until the end, where the explanation for it was just doesn't work. It's yeah, very it, strange. It wasn't for how nicely complex... The setup was, yeah. the explanation wasn't complex enough to explain it all. 
which is too bad because I really did enjoy most of this movie because it left me mm-hmm. wondering and it had me curious. Like I stayed engaged, particularly because everyone was acting just off enough yeah, that I was all like, a little weird. I don't know which of these people is going going to end up being the bad guy. Like there was potential everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And the Sylvia character was so obviously the bad person, like so obviously the crazy person that I'm like, oh, it's going to end up being somebody else. And it wasn't really like unless it was Max. But even if it was Max, it was like Max taking advantage of the fact that his wife was having mental difficulties. And like it was. Yeah, it was very strange. Or possibly she wasn't at all, and Max set the whole thing up so that she would get shot at the end. Like, he was trying to get out of this relationship. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like that whole idea, but it's a little too complicated to work. And it didn't... There was nothing to explain that. Like, there's... I I do have a sense that that could have been the issue, especially since Max was alive at the end. Mm -hmm. But it didn't tie it together well enough for it to make sense. So I sort of feel like I'm making it up. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I think you've probably heard throughout this entire discussion just how bewildered and absolutely bewildered we both were by this movie. It was it wasn't a like a really bad experience, but multiple times while watching it, I was going, "What is going on right here?" Like I I just was lost, but not lost, lost a different kind of lost than normal. Very strange experience. So I was kind of hooked in with the mystery of it all and then disappointed by the end and also confused the entire time and the people didn't act like people. So I would say what we have here is a pretty bad movie, but not terrible. (laughs) You see my problem. I do, but you have to pick a number. Oh, I'll pick a number. And that number is... Two white roses out of five. Hmm. You like to go for like the B-side deep cuts for the rating system. Yeah, I think that's where you gotta go. All right. Um, I think I tend to go for the more obvious ones. I I need to I need to try to dig deeper. (laughs) Okay, so you said two? I did. Two, okay. You know, given how much I actually enjoyed watching and and being confused by and, (laughs) and like trying to put the pieces together for so much of it. I might have rated this movie higher, except that there were some unforgivable movie-making sins, if you ask me. Like, setting up too many premises and not following through with them is sure. is a storytelling faux pas that bothers me a lot. Like, it, you can't give me all those questions and make me have all these ideas of what could be going on and then just like sort of throw out half an explanation <laughs> and then roll credits. Like that's yeah. super annoying to me. It f- makes me feel like I wasted my time. And then just the filming, like the the actual movie making elements that went into this, they had a great set. That A-frame house was awesome. I yeah. want to go stay in that cabin. It looked amazing. <laughs> and there's blood in this. I mean, I suspect it actually works better than it looked like oh. it did in the movie. But you know, the A-frame cabin was beautiful. They had all these great um, drive th- drives through the woods at the beginning. And they had a really nice location. Mm-hmm. They did a terrible job with their continuity. <laughs> all of those, like, day for night, night for day, I don't know what time of day it is, no matter what kinds of mistakes, yeah. are very annoying. Like, that's one of your main jobs as a movie maker <laughs> is to set it up so that we know what time it is <laughs> through hints. Sure. They mess that up completely. I thought a, a lot of the scripting was shaky. Like oh, some of the conversation was good. Shaky. Others I was like, oh, that's no, that's not how human beings interact. Mm-hmm. Like, do you not know any people? Although I felt like the actors did a good job with what they were given. Like, I felt like yeah. they presented the script they were given <laughs> in a good way. It just was not a great script to start with. So there were some really, really problematic areas in terms of the making of the movie that are going to cost it a lot of points. So I do think I'm going to score it higher than you, though. I was, I'm was i going to give it a three. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's it's middle of the road. and And I did enjoy... Like two thirds of the movie. Like, I I can't ignore the fact that I was having fun with it until it all fell apart. Like, I was willing to overlook the daylight streaming in the 
basement window yes. in the middle of the night in a blackout if the movie was done you know if the story was intriguing enough but then it it wasn't so you know what it was not it wasn't daylight it was floodlights because remember they were like middle of the night looking outside and they're like there's sylvia walking in the walking through the woods and they see her walking through a floodlight into the darkness while all their power is out actually paul and larry were running through the woods at one point too and they were running through like there were so many lights that you know they were like running through a f- football field rather than <laughs> yeah. the middle of the forest and maybe that's part of what bothered me because i grew up in the middle of midwestern forest it is dark <laughs> there in the middle of the night and people you know they put up floodlights in like in front of their house yeah, they, or like at their exist, driveway but they don't work when the power's out they don't work when the power's out, and they don't pepper the entire forest with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just... I don't know. That's just... Yeah. It was carelessness. That's what it was, and that bothers me. Like, if you're going to make a movie, do it well. At least put effort... Like, try. If you try and fail, great, but this felt careless. See, you reminded me of the people in Escape Room and how they didn't try to solve the puzzles. Oh, yeah. It made me angry. Yeah. Well... Let's see what we can get mad about tomorrow. All right. Thanks for taking this movie way too serious with me. Okay. No problem. See you tomorrow. (laughs) On the flippity floppity. No, that's not where I'm going to... I know that our viewers do not like to hear the term flippity floppity and that it's deeply upsetting to them. And because of that, I will not use that term anymore. Starting on the flippity floppity. Was lame. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll just cut that out then.